All right, guys, welcome back to Wild Outdoor Living. So as you may remember, if you follow the channel from my last video, I did sell my Trek stash and I have replaced it with this, a Surly Krampus built from the frame up um, with all its own parts. So there's no, there's no other Surly Krampus as far as, as far as I know, built exactly this way. It's pretty exciting. Um, and the reason I did this and how it all came together uh, is very dependent on the current bike shortage and kind of pandemic situation. So really kind of cool how this bike has been influenced by availability and what I had in my parts bin overall. So if you guys aren't aware, if you want to buy a bike right now in the United States and the shop um, that you're near doesn't have it on the floor, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to get it, especially if it's under like four grand uh, or more in some cases. So all the kind of standard bikes are gone, all the Walmart bikes are generally gone, um, and they're kind of trickling back in, but it looks like that's going to be the situation for, you know, the next several months, probably into next year. At first it was like, well, you can't get a bike under $1,000, and then it was $2,000, and then three, and now it's almost impossible to get anything. And that was okay, fine, we can't sell bikes, kind of important, but oh well. Uh, but now it's becoming, oh, also, you can't get a derailleur, you can't get chains, you can't get tires, you can't get a floor pump, um, you can't get parts in general. So we're having kind of a an interesting year, if you'd say. So when I went to build this, yeah, very heavily influenced by availability and, and choices made in that regard. If we start here at the handlebar. Uh, this is the Surly Krampus frame, by the way. It's full chromoly steel, as all Surleys are. It's a size large. Um, I'm 5'11", for everyone that is going to ask. So these red ergon grips here, I already had. Um, when I'm doing bikepacking stuff, I will have, I do have another set of ergons that have bar ends on them, and I will be swapping those out. Unfortunately, they're not red. And then I already had the blue race phase handlebar. That was something I had on the stash. The stem was one I had to buy directly from the shop. Um, there are still stems in stock, but it's getting much more difficult. The level brakes were a choice that was made because it was either get level brakes or jump way up in price, possibly get a downhill brake, something of that nature. This was the only kind of like low priced hydraulic brake I could get my hands on. Still a pretty good brake, really good feel. Really like the shorter levers on there, um, but like a cheaper Shimano brake or even a mid-range Shimano brake was not an option. An Ergon saddle, this is one I've had for a long time. You can see the wear on it. That was one that came out of my parts bin. The wheels that are on it are Bontrager line elites. So this is an aluminum wheel with straight pull spokes, really kind of nice um, aluminum hubs. Right now it's running 54 tooth engagement. They do come stock with 108 points of engagement, um, but I had taken those out to use them on the fuel and I haven't replaced them really cheap, like $30. Um, upgrade. This bike doesn't really need to have 108 points of engagement, but um, 54 is pretty sweet. The pedals are also out of my parts bin. And then the crank set is where we kind of get into the new stuff. So this race face Affect um, R is a little bit lighter than the original Affect, a little bit different styling, um, but it fit this 28 tooth chain ring that I already had in my parts bin. And so it saved me some money over going to like a Shimano or a SRAM um, that would be a little bit more expensive. Um, and also the race face has generally been a pretty good quality. The other thing I like about it and that became really important for this build is it's a 24 millimeter spindle and it fits a Holotech 2 bottom bracket, another uh, 24 millimeter bottom bracket. So that was a bottom bracket that was in stock at the store, actually getting really, really hard to get. but. One that was available at the time when I was gathering all these parts. And so, yeah, we've got a Shimano bottom bracket, a race face crank. And then the drivetrain is a one by nine Microshift Advent um, nine speed uh, drivetrain. So yeah, nine speed chains are 
pretty inexpensive these days. Um, the Advent drivetrain in general, shifter, um, derailleur, cassette, really, really affordable. Um, three gears less, of course, than a 12 speed. And so actually a pretty light setup and really inexpensive replacement parts. That said, it's basically impossible to get them now. So um, hopefully I don't break anything before everything becomes normal again. But that's kind of the situation across the board. So something I was willing to risk. I may have chosen the Advent um, X or Advent 10. That, uh, this, this cassette here is 11 to 42. That cassette goes up to 11 to 48, which is a sweet range and 10 speed. And that could have been a good choice, but it's a little bit more expensive and it wasn't in stock. It just wasn't going to be an option for me. So I ended up going with the nine speed and honestly love the simplicity of it. We'll see how it goes um, long term and do a review on it. But but yeah, really impressed with that. Now we are running 2.6 inch tires. Of course, the Krampus was the first 29 plus bike, so it can run a three inch tire. But the 2.6s, as I've said before, are just a little bit more lively. They do still offer really good um, kind of small bump absorption over like a 2.3 or, or something smaller. And so the seat post, of course, I had already kind of started doing this blue red um, theme here. So when I saw this seat post, I, I was pretty tempted. And then when I saw that it was on sale, it was actually 50% off, um, I ended up grabbing it did install the race face um, sticker since it happened to be red went with the color scheme and there's a lot of race face on this bike now we get to kind of the party piece so this is probably the most interesting story of this build this is a cane creek 110 headset so not too many people run these these are very expensive headsets i think this one retails for 160 dollars it has what what they used to call a 110 year warranty, which is kind of insane when, if you know anything about warranties. Um, that's better even than a normal lifetime warranty. Uh, last year they did clarify or kind of change the wording on that. So now it is a lifetime guarantee. Um, basically, no matter who has the headset, uh, you don't even have to prove to be the original owner. If there's anything wrong with it, no questions asked, they will replace it period. So you guys can go on their website and read um, their guarantee, but it's pretty impressive. And a lot of the reviews I read said that this headset is actually better engineered than the stuff from Chris King. Um, it actually, it has a longer warranty and it just in general supports the, the fork better and is a higher quality piece. So yeah, it does have really long, of course you can't see it here, but the the, the collars or the necks that come off of these and go into the frame are longer than normal. Um, the, the internal pieces do support the, the fork really well and the bearings do seem to be really, really high quality. So I didn't want to go with a 110. Uh, that wasn't my original plan. I was going to do a 40 series headset, but I waited a single day to think about my build and all the 40s went out of stock and there was one single 110 left in the size and no other headsets to choose from. So we ended up with a King Creek 110 and I ordered that um, as soon as that kind of happened. That really like pulled the trigger on this build because if I didn't order it, it was going to be really, really hard to put this bike together. From there, we do have some wolf to stack spacers. This bottom black spacer is a interlocking uh, stack spacer that goes specifically with this 110 headset uh, just to kind of add some rigidity. They're pretty expensive, like I think... $14 for a single spacer or somewhere around there. Maybe you can get it for 10 bucks, but that's a lot for a single spacer. So I went with the not as expensive uh, anodized aluminum red wolf tooth spacers, which are pretty sweet on their own. And that is about it for this build. So, you know, initial impressions, of course, I'll do a full review on this bike. It is set up differently than, you know, a stock Krampus. I think it's about four or five pounds lighter than a stock Krampus. So, you know, my impressions are gonna be a little bit different than if you were to buy a stock build. Right now, that's not really an option. So, you know, um, it's gonna be a lot more common to build up some of these frames. I think there's, there's like seven frame sets left in this color right now in large, um, a handful in the other sizes. So 
It's getting really hard to get these, so I decided to get this video out as quick as I could. So we'll do a full, full review on it, but I will say, um, right out of the box, this thing weighs 28 pounds, even, um, the way it sits with pedals. And then it is, it is so smooth. Uh, this is one of the smoothest bikes I think I've ever been on. And I need to ride it more, of course, and you know, 920 is really smooth. The, the stash was was smooth and, and, and really fast. Um, but this thing just has a just has a feel to it that's that's really impressive. Um, things I might change in the future, we'll see. It would be little things. Right now we're running Shimano rotors with SRAM brakes. Um, they're a little bit noisier than normal, but but they work really well. So there's some wear items that I might change as they wear out. But overall, this thing is feeling pretty solid. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But if you do want to build a bike right now, there are ways to do it, but you're going to have to get a little creative. So, all right, I think that's it for today, and we'll catch you later.